group and we appreciate y'all coming and she had asked me I'm the director of case management here and kind of I won't say I'm an insurance authority I've, I've learned through hard knocks and as soon as you learn the rules of insurance they try to change them on you so um, it, it's just important that you know what kind of insurance you have and what your benefits are so we're going to talk a minute about uh, Medicare, the different types, and then Medicare replacements. So I'm going to just give you an overview um, about that and then ask questions. So Medicare has um, Part A, which is your inpatient. I'm sure you're all aware if you come in the hospital, um, you want to make, make sure you know if you're inpatient or your observation. It makes a big difference in your insurance, your co-pays, what you pay out of pocket. So um, Medicare has now told hospitals that we have to give you a notice that your observation, if you're going to be an observation. And what happened when this first came out is um, some people were put in the hospital to observation and then after three days they went to a rehab facility. Well, Medicare won't pay for rehab if you're not an inpatient. So then these people got out of rehab 30 days later and owed $50,000 for rehab because they didn't qualify. So um, everybody needs to be on the same page, meaning you, me, the doctor, your insurance company, and whoever, home health or rehab or whoever you're going to next. So that's the first thing. If you come into a hospital, you want to make sure you know if you're inpatient or observation. Part A pays for inpatient. Part B is your outpatient procedures, your um, blood work that you may have to have at your doctor's office, your doctor's office visits. If you come here and you have outpatient surgery but you stay overnight in observation, that's all considered under B, Medicare B, Part B. Um, D is your uh, prescription coverage. So that covers a lot of prescriptions. It still doesn't mean I don't have to get pre-authorization, meaning if you, they're gonna put you on a new type of medicine, I still have to call in and make sure we get that pre-authorized so you don't go to the drugstore and have a heart attack when they tell you it's $800 for a pill or something. So we wanna make sure that doesn't happen. We don't need any repeat customers. Um, then after Medicare, was, and, and I don't know which administration, but at some point they started coming up with what they thought was a great idea, which is Medicare replacements. Now, I have almost put my shoe through my TV at home. My husband's really upset with a lot of these commercials that promise you the moon as a Medicare replacement because they don't give you the moon. So... Um, you have to be very leery. And I'm talking of the Aetna now has one, Humana, United Healthcare, Blue Cross Medicare replacement. Everybody has a Medicare replacement. Are those the Advantage plans? The Advantage plans, yes, sir. Um, so what happens is they don't have an A, B, C, D system. They're just one-stop shop. Um, and they're a lot of times cheaper than what you have to pay for all of your Medicares. Just remember, as, as we get to our age, we've learned this. You get what you pay for. So here's what's happened, and we see it too many times a, a day to tell it. But you come in, and you tripped over your dog's leash, and you broke your hip. All right, so the two of us come in. I have Medicare. And, um, and an uh, AARP supplement, okay? So I got my Medicare and AARP supplement. I come in, there's no pre-cert required, I get my surgery, uh, I have my whatever my copay is under Medicare. Um, I need to go to rehab, it's a smooth transition, I can have my pick of rehab because everybody loves Medicare. Um, so I'm here three days, I'm ready to go to rehab. It's a smooth transition. My AARP is going to pay my co-pays. There's no um, 
cut no copay for the first 21 days of rehab. I get out of rehab, I go home. So basically, I broke my hip and all it cost me was pain and some time. You come in here with an advantage or replacement plan. So the minute you get here, we have to notify them you're here. And then they have to decide, you know, what they're gonna let us do or not let us do. So we go ahead and try to fix your hip um, while we're arguing with them. And a lot of times it's, they, we, they have denied hip surgery and we've had to appeal it and get a doctor on the phone to their doctor. And I'll tell you, I'll, I've told many of a nurse at the insurance company, if you're denying this patient, I need you to drive to my hospital and tell them because that's not my place to tell them. Um, and we have to really be your advocate with them and push back on them. They look, and there, it's not just the Medicare Advantage, it's, it's the commercials too. Um, they'll tell us we have 12 hours to let them know you've been admitted. If I, if I let them know in 12 hours and one minute, they're gonna deny it because they can. They, they can, so they look for any reason to deny. So I stay on, on the ready and I don't take no for an answer from insurance companies. You're paying your premiums. You deserve whatever benefits you get. Don't a lot of these replacement plans require that you go to their hospital? Some do, some don't. A lot of hospitals have, um, it, it used to, when it first came out, all hospitals took all replacement plans because everybody thought it was going to be as good as Medicare. But it's not. So now we get referrals here from Athens Regional or Wind or Northeast Georgia because they're not taking many of these Advantage plans anyway. Like there's Ambetter, there's um, several of them that they don't take because it's not beneficial for them because it doesn't pay. Um, so you break your hip and you have one of these Advantage replacement plans and you come in here, I've notified them, you've had your surgery, it's day three, it's time for you to go to rehab, and so we've sent all of your record to them, and it takes them another three days to authorize if you can go to rehab. So now you're here day six. They're only gonna pay me for that hip, whatever they're gonna pay for the hip surgery, whether you stay three days, whether you stay six days, whether you stay 60 days, okay? So they have no incentive to try to get you out of here. And then about day five or six, they'll call me and say, don't you think they're well enough now with the PT from the hospital to go home? Well, you know, they're 88. There's nobody at home to, that can pull on them except their 92-year-old husband. And they, home health is, only can come two or three times a week. That's not enough. We need to get get your and i keep telling them this is your member that i tell the insurance company we need to get your member back to their baseline before they broke their hip and you need to do it as quick as possible because the longer they don't move the more susceptible they are to blood clots to pneumonia to everything else going on so then it's a fight and then they'll have certain ones they won't authorize certain nursing homes a lot of nursing homes, we have a problem. They have a bed, but they don't want to take certain of the insurances. It's, it's even worse for them. Um, so it, it's very, insurance is very convoluted. You know, whether you're an Affordable Care Act per, uh, proponent or whether you're an Obama proponent and whether you're a Trump proponent, whoever, I don't care as long as whatever you're paying for, you, we get coverage and you get what you need. So, if they would just let me, next time vote for me president and I will fix it. <laughs> so, um, because I, it, it's going to take somebody that really knows health care from both sides. You know, physicians know it from a physician side. And I'll give you an example. Um, one of the Advantage plans is Cigna Health Springs, and they're pretty good. They're one of the better ones. Um, but they pay the doctors really well. And their incentive to the doctors is you keep our members out of the hospital and you get, we'll pay you almost 90% of the bill, okay? 
So the doctors all switched to that and told patients, we're not going to see you anymore unless you go with Cigna Health Springs. As well, a as a no, that's a replacement oh, for right. Medicare. So then um, they did that in January of last year. They didn't tell the hospital they were doing it. Those all those people came started coming here for lab work, and we were not in network. So then we couldn't admit their patients here. So it took about three months to get in network, and it was a new plan, a new in this area. So it's just you got to be on board with everybody. Um, and at, at our age, we need to make sure we're covered on all fronts. You know, when I was. 21, if I didn't have as much inpatient coverage, but I had my outpatient coverage, I would probably be okay. Now, if you go with the, you know, a plan that just rewards you for being an outpatient, that's great, but chances are something's going to happen now. You, you, people that have chronic conditions, um, you're going to come across pneumonia in the community, and we have had a lot of pneumonia this year. So there's chances are you're going to be in the hospital for a day or two at some point, and you want to make sure you're maximized on the coverage. Um, so any questions about the difference in those two? You, what you need to do is be an informed consumer, and you need to drive your own bus. A lot of us grew up where you just trusted your insurance company to take care of you. I pay my premiums. I need my hip fixed. Fix my hip. Well, nowadays, you're your best proponent. And if you can't speak for yourself and you're here, I'm going to speak for you and get what you need. Um, so if, you're, if you get a letter saying your insurance company has denied something, you make sure you call me. My number's on every piece of paper that goes out of here. Um, and let's do, I appeal everything. If, that, if you're here for one midnight, your insurance company's going to say, I want them to be OVS. No, their sodium was low, they met inpatient, they need to be an inpatient. Because if they go back afterwards and try to change it, that affects your co-pays again. Plus, then that leaves you kind of out in the cold. With Medicare, you can't do that. All the replacements will push to have you change the OBS. Medicare does not. So that's another plus. Uh, for your ease, my ease, for what you need. Medicare is the best product out there. Um, I've told my told both my parents before they died, if I ever if after they died I found out they had changed their health insurance, I would dig them up and kill them again. <laughs> so they they were they were threatened. They people would come to the door and they would just enroll him in Medicare B. And you go online at it's CMS dot gov GOV, um, and then you, I would just search enrollment. Um, the other thing is there's a couple in Winder and Covington, the Social Security offices, they can also help you. And I think they even have the form. And I think what you'd have to do is just try to, I think you have to attach where yours is ending right. for him. We'll right. Nothing can be, yeah, okay. So, the, and that's where, they should give you a notice though, like a 30 day notice that it's going to be ending, that they will accept that. Well, the piece, they will uh, preliminarily take your notice saying your coverage stops in 30 days, you are eligible for COBRA, whatever, whatever. So they will accept that. They're supposed to, so you make them do that. Okay, okay then do they show you the, all the different option plans? Yes. Okay. Uh, but if you're at a Medicare office, they're going to show you the B, you know, you're, you, do, you have A, you need B. I don't even know what C covers. Is anybody, is experimental chemo and stuff like that, I think. Uh, but it's a weird when you don't need. D is prescription, you want that one. Um, and I'll come back to that in a second, too. So, um, but if on top of what you get with Medicare, if you want something to cover your co-pays and deductibles, AARP is the cheapest, best commercial supplement plan that I have worked with. Uh, and I've worked with some I've never heard of before, like Baker's Fidelity. I don't know, somebody may be there, but I, yeah, that's, that's a good one though. Yeah, so, um, 
Baker Banker's Life, but so there's weird ones out there. Um, but they all cover the same thing, correct? If it's a it's a Plan F, it's a Plan F, no matter who you get it from. Well, no, mm -mm. Uh, Medicare is the only one that has like A, B, C, D. The rest of them usually are a commercial um, that can cover, like if you get um, uh, uh, the AARP supplemental plan, it'll cover deductibles and all for your inpatient, for your OBS, and for prescriptions. But there's different types of supplements that cover different levels. There is, there is. Some but have it, a large deductible. This is the last year to get in on the one with no <coughs> deductible. If you don't enroll in it now, you can't get it after this year. Well, there is one, and I don't know who that's through. AARP is still going to offer the lower deductible. But see, you've already, there's a AARP plan that is a deductible copay plan that will cover all those out-of-pocket expenses that's not covered by Medicare. It's like a Medicare supplement plan. A lot of these, um, when when we were working, like I had my own insurance, my husband had me under his, and then you think you're covered, and then they fight about who has to pay what first and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. This is an on top of plan, not if that makes sense. AFLAC has the levels you're talking about where you can get it just for my inpatient. If I have to go inpatient, uh, it'll pay me this much money. Um, and they also pay that directly to you, which is a good benefit also. So you do see some money coming in. You also need to look at your bills. Um, ask for itemized bills whenever you go anywhere, especially into a hospital. Um, it, a lot of it is automated. And um, it, it may be that you checked out today at 3 o'clock. But for some reason, the secretary, we're swamp busy and nobody takes you out of the system till three o'clock in the morning and they charge you another night. So you need to look at stuff like that. Uh, medications are another one. They dispense them to you if you went home before that doses of those antibiotics, you need to make sure they're not charging you for those kind of things. Um, and that's another way to cut some of your deductibles and some of your co-pays is by making sure your bill is accurate. Um, we don't. We have a lot of um, stops in our system that make us relook at the bill before it goes out, but you got humans doing autom and automation, and sometimes those things don't go. So um, it is not. Uh, I think some people say if you ask for an itemized bill, you know that it's a bad thing. I think it's a great thing. I, I encourage everybody. I look at all my family's itemized bill. And um, you just want to make sure you get it. You know, I don't want to go to Kroger and pay for stuff I didn't get, you know. So, and we all know that we're already having to pay for those that don't have any insurance. Mm -hmm. So th that's a whole nother issue that we don't even get into, um, trying to find them some coverage. Um, so supplemental wise, um, there is, uh, do you know who that one is through? Um. There is there, a couple. There's lots of companies that sell them. And this is the last year you can get, I thought it was a low deductible, maybe a no deductible. It's a zero deductible. Uh, there's another plan that only has like $184 deductible a year. Um, so before, and I know January 1st, all those are going away. Right. So if you get in now, you're supposed to be locked in. And that way you don't have that escalating deductible, which has been tremendous over the years. Y'all remember when it used to be easy? Yeah. And you didn't have to worry about this stuff. This is just crazy. So anyway, my dad had a hip replacement and that, you know, it's just amazing all the, you get 1,500 bills it feels like for one yeah. little hospitalization because you get them from everybody that touched him and the radiologist that you never saw and the hematologist that you never saw but he looked at the lab work so you just need to know what's going on and who all I'm getting bills from and why I, I'm trying to help a, a family now that came in with 15 bills and I so I just started calling saying and one of them was you know you haven't it was the date of service was 5 30 May 31st so on June 20th they got a bill saying 
you have a past due balance. And I'm like, I'm not, you know, you got to give me more, you know, 30 days at least to be past due. So I called him and I said, first of all, who are you billing for? It's emerging net. Nobody, it had nothing on there about what company, who, which doctor they were with, and they told me they were for the ER doctors. So I'm like, okay, well, let's talk it through. So anyway, we had found this um, patient some and better insurance, and they could get it under open, the past open enrollment because she had just lost her job. Anyway, so we were able to get, I was able to call all these places and give them their insurance so that now they can bill, which also should, tells me you need to look at that next bill and the next bill because after your insurance pays, they'll send you one and gives you another balance. Make sure they take <coughs> off what the insurance paid and you should be getting something from the insurance saying, we, this is how much the hospital charged, this is how much we paid. They also should do an adjustment off of that bill because we have um, contracts and rules like with Medicare. If, if Medicare is gonna give me um, $5,000 on a $10,000 bill, we have a contractual where we write off another 20%. So it just, it helps to know you have an insurance bill and you also, also, also should have a deductible, I mean a adjustment with that. All right, so make sure you've gotten both of those before you start paying. Also, for some reason, it's overwhelming, uh, which it usually is. Um, you don't have to pay these bills in full up front. <coughs> You, you start giving these people, you know, $5, $10 a month, if that's all you can do, that's all you can do. As long as you're paying them a dollar a month, they cannot put you in collections and they cannot ruin your credit. Okay? So, and if they start to try, you tell them Susie said they couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Let me tell you two little stories that <clears throat> both concern this hospital. Okay. In January, my wife got two bills totaling $28,000 for procedures that had previously been covered under our insurance. Going back and forth, so on and so forth, we called Emily. Emily put us in touch with the local billing department, and it turned out they were miscoded. Happens a lot. Right? Because of outsourcing. Well, Another problem you run into is you go to the doctor or the hospital, and all of a sudden you're getting a bill. And you call up and say, why am I getting a bill? Well, your insurance only paid so much. I said, well, what about my supplemental? Mm. Oh, you have supplemental? We didn't file it. Why not? Well, you didn't give it to us. That's baloney. Because you go to any doctor or any hospital, the first thing they ask for is all your cards and your license. So they're too damn lazy to look it up. And your firstborn. Exactly. Right. And your firstborn. So let's go to the first one first. Two things can happen on that. Um, the doctor has to tell us beforehand I'm going to do a, a hernia surgery and he's going to use this code. So we get that code authorized. If for some reason when he's <laughs> dictating that procedure report he says something different and it can be this was laparoscopic repair and now we opened you, it throws that whole procedure code out the window and they code this one down here now that's not covered. All we have to do is update the insurance that it changed, but that has to happen or you have to be aware of what's going on. Um, so that can change. The other thing that Medicare likes to do is twice a year, usually <coughs> January and October, they change their covered procedure codes. They are the most lenient. They have, I would say, 7,000 procedures that are inpatient only procedures like your hip repairs and your shoulders and um, several abdominal surgeries. So that means if you come in, you're going to be covered. And Medicare says that no, they got to be inpatient. You can't do OVS. I need they need to be inpatient. No other companies do that. Every other company wants you out and OVS and everything that's going to cost them the least amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, so Medicare does expand their list at least twice a year and try to cover more things that they're seeing um, members be in the hospital for longer. Um, the other thing, the second thing is, yeah, look at your bills and know why something's happened or not happened. Um, and it, it's, 
there's two tabs on every screen and if they don't tab to the next one they're not going to see your supplemental and you know just like you said you're you're speaking for you yes ma'am i have supplemental yes ma'am you got it yes ma'am you need to file it um that that's exactly how you need to handle that and if you can't get anywhere with anybody let me know <laughs> well what got me annoyed was when i called corporate who's on the bill and and they told me there's nothing wrong with the bill. They didn't want to go any further with it. That's why I called local. Call us. Yeah. But, we your, get this. but your number's not on the Okay, local. are you We're filming? So I can't say anything about corporate. I'm sorry. Or I would have. <laughs> <laughs> corporate is such a huge support to us here. <laughs> <laughs> too much outsourcing that's the problem it is and that's mm -hmm. cheaper somehow for somebody but not for necessarily for y'all you know so because of the thing you know when um when it used to be in-house those coders would go to the chart and look at the official record and if it didn't match they would ask the doctor now those <laughs> people don't even know the doctor know how to you know so it is it is yeah the world we live in in health care other questions? Yes, ma'am. When you initially go on Medicare, who do you contact and how far is that to turn 65 you contact? Well, I told them when I was 20 that I wanted to be on as soon as possible. Um, you go to one of your local uh, Medicare offices and you go ahead and you can go ahead and give them notice and you can do it. I think age 60 for if you're going to do 62 is partial retirement 65 is full retirement so usually I would give them at least six months notice that in January of 2018 I'm going to be starting my retirement six months notice. is it yes and if you want to go to the social security board and winder best thing to do is you call and get an appointment because if you don't you want to sit out for four or five hours before they even see you but if you give them an appointment at a certain time you will sit no longer than 15 minutes I think. and also go on the website uh, just look up medicare or cms is the centers for medicare services and they have a list of paperwork you need to take or documents you oh, need to yes. take with you. Make sure you take them or you got to start all over the next mm -hmm. time because you're going to talk to somebody different. So, and then it's two or three things. I think it's, you know, your birth certificate, all your marriage certificates, <coughs> your divorces, well, you know, your, your fingerprints, it's, you know, it's, it's very extensive list to prove who you are. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to bring up, everybody knows your Medicare, your Social Security number, I think it's January of next year, is going away. I mean, it, it's still going to be your Social Security number, but it's not going to be your Medicare number anymore. Oh. Mm. Okay? So you're, you'll be getting a lot of information in the next six months about that um, because all this identity th thievery going on is based on your Social Security number which is also your Medicare number. So what happens is your Social Security number is everywhere. You know, we don't put it on our paperwork anymore because if somebody uh, hacks into us, they can get your Social Security number. So what they're gonna, what Medicare has said is your Social Security number is gonna be private to you. They're gonna give you a uh, insurance number, just like if you had Blue Cross Blue Shield, that's gonna be your user ID for the insurance. So those two things are going to be separating. And they will be sending out a lot of notices. You'll get your new cards so and all that stuff. What now? You should get a new card before January. Yes, but you should get a letter. I think they said the letters will go out in like October to let everybody know. And they're going to do it gradually. So I don't know if it's A through D is the first month or, you know, that, that's going to be, that's massive. Mm -hmm. I went ahead and took the whole nine yards A and B, so I'm paying for that, plus I'm on hers, but she's retiring, so we got to figure this out because she's going to be taking that too, and we got to, I don't want, I want a supplemental, I don't want the other stuff. Right. I want something that works. 
And what you would need to look for is a supplemental that would cover your deductibles copays. But if you're not taking D, the prescription, you want something that's going to help you with right. prescriptions. And it depends. I mean, I, my dad was, you know, 88 and had 88 medications, one for every year of his life, mm -hmm. I guess. So he, I took D for him because that was just the easiest, quickest way. He also was um, TRICARE for life. He was retired military. So, of course, we got a lot of help there, too. Um, which brings up another point. If you have any of anything else like TRICARE or CHAMPUS or those kind of things, they all play into the paying some of your supplementals. So, is anybody VA in here? I have TRICARE. Um, when they came out with the supplementals, they sent me a letter and said, I really didn't need to have a supplement. But what they provided was going to be fine, and it's worked. Okay, mm -hmm. and Tricare is, you know, was the good government insurance yes. for like my dad, and I, you know, you could you can't buy that on the market anymore. Um, VA, the diff the thing about VA is you can have VA insurance and you can still have Medicare, but when you come into a facility, you have to claim which one you want to use. You don't can't use both. So a lot of times, if you use VA, it, it, you're hindered at, at a if you go to the VA, you're you're great. Well, I won't say you're great. That is issues too. But they they cover. If you come here and use VA, we are hamstruck a little bit because we still have to go through the VA. And as you know, it may take me a week to get somebody to answer the phone or call me back. So um, yes, it is. And I tell them all the time. And you know, these are our veterans you're taking care of, and somebody needs to step up the plate. But nobody's listening to me again. <coughs> Elect me president, and, and we can fix the VA. Um, so those would be my two platforms I run for president on. Um, but but that, that's the difference. And you, you can change midstream, but it's a big mess for you because you're going to have to keep up with what part you were under VA and what part you were under Medicare. So, uh, But everybody will ask you to make that choice. Yes, ma'am. Can I ask you a question about names? I would, oh, yes. Sir. What is it? <laughs> well, as long as my husband was living, our, the company took care of our insurance. And so when he passed away, they covered me for six months. So in January, I had to start paying for insurance. Mm -hmm. And um, it was available through the company. But we always had Medicare with Blue Cross Supplemental. Mm -hmm. Now it's United Healthcare mm -hmm. Advantage with Medicare as supplemental. Are you saying that I'd be better off if I went with Medicare and got a supplemental? Cheaper supplemental. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have a lot more coverage. Yeah. Medicare is the primary, would cover everything. As a secondary, it can't overrule. Like if uh, United Healthcare said, well, you know, she walked 10 feet, I don't think she needs rehab. Medicare couldn't come back and overrule that and say, no, we want her to have rehab. Where if it's flipped, Medicare could say, yes, she needs rehab, and United Healthcare would then have to agree. Okay. So it, it's better to let them be in the driver's seat. And could I go to the Medicare office? I mean, the Social Security yes, office? Yes, you should be able to. Mm -hmm. And if you, um, <coughs> were you laughing because they won't no. help her? Oh, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> At my, you were laughing at my na no. nativity <laughs> at the, the fact that they're helpful. They should be able to help you. Now, I don't know if they'd make you since, it's been since January, they may make you wait for the next open enrollment. But at least you would know and could let them know that's the change you want to make. And they can give you, it's a website you go to and sign up. It's not terribly hard. Um, but or, and they can do it there too if you want to go sit back in line. So, or make an appointment, good idea. Question you was on United Healthcare. Yes, sir. I used to have them a long time ago. When we have a work day, I have no problem with it. But now, if I'm going to have to have a uh, supplemental insurance to go along with the other, how great are they there? Um, or how good are they? Well, as supplemental, um, they can't make your yes or no choices. They just have to pay whatever they're going to cover of, of whatever's left. So they're not as terrible. Does that answer your question? Uh, was that positive? I, was that a This is what I'm trying to find out. I'm not going to go and switch my Medicare out. I'm going to keep it straight up. Right. 
I just want a supplemental to go along with it. Well, I would do some cost analysis. I, I, like I said, AARP is the best I've worked with because they play, pay the well, that's complete. Who they got that's the United Healthcare. United Healthcare. Well, I think it's a United Healthcare Blue or something. Hmm. But um, if it's through AARP, it's the best plan. Well, it's coming through there and they're saying for United Healthcare. But as long as they're the supplement, yes. Supplement. Yes. They ain't saying no danger. Like okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and AARP is also doing holding the deductibles low for the next year, hmm. but not zero. But they have, they're holding the lower deductibles, so that that's a good one to look at. But I would price mark it out, and if you've had, you know, if my son-in-law sells Blue Cross and I can get a good deal as a supplement, I I might throw him a little money, but he better pay what I need him to pay, you know, or I'd kick him out of the family. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about knowing your insurance company, knowing your needs, knowing you pay your premiums, and knowing you need to get what you're entitled to. And knowing that they're gonna try to get away with giving as little as possible. It's a business to them, it's not their health. Uh, so if you're talking medications, you should go with Medicare. Medicare covers the most mm -hmm. that I've seen and it also has the least amount of prior authorizations. Meaning if I send you home uh, with Xeralto, um, all the other insurances, all the other Advantage plans will make you have to try Coumadin and fail first, make you have to do have a bleeding episode before they'll ever let you have Xeralto. Medicare, all I got to do is tell them we need Xeralto because of the atrial fib, and they're like, okay, you know, good. And they give me a number, and you go to the drugstore, and it's there. So that... It, for my part, getting you what you need is, is the easiest. And I don't know cost-wise, does anybody know what the D piece costs? I, I don't know what A and B costs, but I don't know what D costs. I would look at it as an analysis. And if you're going to look at keeping United Healthcare as a supplement, how much of the prescriptions do they cover versus D of Medicare? Because when you're getting a supplement, if you don't have D, you need something that's going to really help you with <coughs> prescriptions. Because in, in this day and age, when you come go to any doctor, you're getting a prescription for something, need it or not. You're saying that you can get uh, D through Medicare? Yes. Prescriptions? Yes. I thought you had to take that through some other insurance. Mm-mm. Medicare has a D. Did they have it to start with? Uh, no, they did add it later. Uh, that's where I messed up. Yes. Oh, you did? Uh, well, yeah. tell them. Tell them they snuck that by you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. So if you go with Medicare and then go with the um, AARP plan that you're talking about, do you still need to go with D? Or <coughs> yes, yes. D's your prescriptions. Okay. D is uh, like having a prescription premium. And you pay it all under Medicare, but you want to just pick what, the, you know, you can pick A only, which I don't think you have to pay that much for. B is a little more, and D is probably the most because it does cover the most. And, and when you say D, you're talking about prescription. Prescription. D is the prescription okay. part of it. And if you're not going to go with D, just make sure whatever supplement you have um, or savings you have will cover your medications. Because as you know, they uh, raise those costs quite frequently by 500%, which I don't know how people can stand to take their medications. Excuse me, Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, one time I was talking to an insurance company, they told me that they could raise the insurance in time that they got rid of it, like it, they told me. Well, anyway, I'm on Medicare, and I'm not gonna tell anybody how much, it's, it's high. Medicare is high. High, it is, ooh. Some people working say they don't even pay that much. Well, and well, some, and it depends on how much you work during your life, and if you get full oh. Medicare, if you get partial, or if you're getting it with with a spouse or without a spouse, that yeah. all affects the cost. Um, so, um, but with Medicare, I will tell you, Medicare, they are trying to stay solvent, of course, but they are try, They were made with the right idea to take care of their members. Every other insurance company is about making money. 
So just know when you're dealing with them, that's what it's about. It's a business. Medicare, although it is a business, they are not as business minded. They know their business is to take care of the people of the United States. You know that have met, that do qualify for Medicare. Um, as cheaply as possible. Well, and the other thing about that, they do, you know, uh, any insurance company, it's just like Kroger, they can double their price of milk if people are going to buy it at the double price, you know. So, you know, maybe we just need this room right here to just start rallying. Mm -hmm. on, no, I don't know. If we go to Cap the Capitol Hill, I think we get arrested now, don't we? There's too many people up there rallying or something. So, um, any, was there any other question? Did you have one? I have one about, um, we looked at his medications and the D plans. Walmart gives you like 90 days for $10. Yeah, and that's another thing um, to look at. I, I've got, can you go to my office? Mm -hmm. and I sure mean, can. Right on the knows. corner of my desk are two packets and then the uh, prescription cards on top. Mm -hmm. I was going to bring the hand up. Um, these are that are called good, good RX cards, and what you need to do at every pharmacy is, is ask them which is which pays better, because they a lot of times your medications are on the four dollar ten dollar list. Well, you're still paying your deductible on your Part D. But as long as you know those medications are going to be on that list, and well, all your medications old, are. He's on old Alipur and all. You know the old Cinnabar. That's what we looked at. Well, that, and that—that's a smart idea. The, I don't need D yet, I don't because because we, it's ten dollars for three months. It's cheaper to get you know forty dollars a year for these meds or whatever you know per med. Uh, it depends on how much your meds and your new meds. So now when you go to the doctor though, you want to make sure you tell him. You know, I need the four dollar ten dollar rule. I will tell you, Carmichael's, and most of them, Carmichael's, Kroger, uh, Walgreens, if you tell them it's on anybody's list, I look at all the lists. Publix has a list. But if you go to Carmichael's, and then that's where you've always gone, if you tell them it's on the $4 list at, at, at Walmart, they'll match a list or the $10 list. They will match the price. And most of them will do that. And I just print it out, highlight it, and take it in with my husband's prescription and say, hmm, 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 and get it. Medicare Part D online, if you go to the website, you can enter all of your drugs by dosage, and they will tell you which company in your area has the cheapest um, Part D coverage for you. And there's an app for that also. And it, if you do RX search and you put in your medication, it'll, it'll tell you, I'm in Monroe, and here's the local pharmacies, and here's the one that has it the cheapest. So that's another but way to do it. But it doesn't tell you how much the insurance will pay on it. No, but you maybe you know you know you know mine's eighty percent, eighty twenty, and, and mine's. And on Walmart, if you do the mail order, the ten dollars is free. Oh, it is. Did you hear that? What? At Walmart, if you do the mail order, where it's automatically mailed to you, and you don't have to go back in for refills, the ten dollars is free. So what do you pay for? Just the mail? You don't know, you pay the mail. You just pay that the premium that you pay for D. Oh, okay. That's, That's all you pay. All right. Well, I've been trying to get that for the longest, but I haven't got it yet. Mm -hmm. Give one half a day. So you need to, yeah. Um, this card, we'll start them over here. Um, this is something you can take to your doctor look at. This is a new program that Medicare came up with that give you a lot more, a lot of benefits. And it's called the chronic, um, chronic care management. If you have a chronic illness, diabetes is considered, COPD, congestive heart failure, um, asthma, what's some more chronic diseases Blood y'all have? Blood pressure. Blood pressure, yes, hypertension. Did you say diabetes? Di yeah, diabetes. Depression. Um, depression. That's because we're talking about insurance. I depressed you now. I'm so sorry. Um, Christian, I got a letter from my doctor locally here. Mm -hmm. Already a letter about that. Right. And it's a program, and I think they started rolling out, but I think it ought, 
starts October 1st in all markets. So mm -hmm. this, this that gives you a website. You can go online and look up your disease and know the expectations. Um, it also gives you kind of uh, what you should be paying for stuff. It also, your doctor, uh, it helps them, helps you get into your doctor when you need to, really. Uh, because if you're enrolled under this plan, they only have so many days to see you for your checkups. So it kind of gives them some incentive to get you back in there before you get sick again. So um, is this a, one of the A, B, Z? No, no. This is... This is just on top of, uh, of all that. This is just an extra benefit. To How much is this? Nothing. Oh. This is nothing. This is a lot of resources. Um, okay. Yeah. So you just can sign up. If, if you have one of those chronic illnesses, um, just sign up, and they, they get you into their database, and then they let your doctor know, and they, do, they send you a lot of information, send your doctor a lot of information, and you can kind of chart your course through them. So it's going to be interesting to see. They're hoping to roll out more than just chronic illnesses. They're hoping to do some acute, like your hip fractures and uh, knees and those kind of things after they see how this goes. The other thing we passed out was that good RX card, and everybody should have one of those. Keep it in your wallet. I've got extras if you need one, your husband needs one, take two. Um, but always, you know, say, hey, which is cheaper for me? You know, I, we have one doctor here that gives them to everybody because he, a lot of times, he, and he presents it and he goes, you know, this is cheaper on my good RX, I want it. So they will run both for you, and they, they're used to us doing that to them. Now, I use Friday, they accept this card? Yep, everybody accepts that card, and they'll tell you which is going to be cheaper. With the good RX, it's going to cost you nine dollars and sixty-one cents, and with your regular insurance, it's going to cost you eight eighty-one, or vice versa. So you can make a decision on what you want to use. Correct. Correct. I got them both ways. I got some that's a ninety day, and I got some that's a thirty day. That's just hard to keep up with, isn't it? I don't know how some people do it. My husband, that I tried to help him fill his pill bottles and he accused me of trying to kill him because I've got them all mixed up. So, and I didn't, I didn't say I wasn't trying to kill him, but I didn't really mean for him to catch me. So, but it was, it's a lot of medication and I mean, he's, he's older, a lot older than me. Um, but he's got a pacemaker and the heart problems and the diabetes and, you know, he's got to put up with me. So I'm sure he's got high blood pressure and so he's just on a lot of medication, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. So, you know, he's about to outlive his usefulness. <laughs> truth, truth be told, truth be told, he's costing me a little arm and a leg. But they put that, does anybody have that defibrillator pacemaker? Got you got pace one? Maker. Okay, well, his is a defibrillator pacemaker. And this was several years ago, probably eight years ago. $62,000. I went ballistic. I told him it should come with a remote control. I need you to get up off the couch. I mean, come on, I'm paying that kind of money. I need a remote control. Thing is, at least I'd have one in my hand and he'd have the TV one in his hand. We both could have a remote that way. So, but they didn't go for it. I'm still trying though. I'll get a patent on it. Uh -huh. Well, you guys, thank y'all so much for coming today. We're kind of at the end of our time. I know that Susie's got to get back to work and, you know, probably call Medicare for some other patients. I know, definitely. So um, thank y'all so much for coming. Um, we do these monthly lunch and learns every single month. Um, for the next three months coming up in July, we are going to be talking about fiber and why fiber is important in the diet. That'll be the last Wednesday of July. Um, in August, we are going to be talking about the gallbladder and what the gallbladder does. We have a new general surgeon on staff that's going to be joining us for that. And then in September, we're going to be talking about diabetic foot care. So stay tuned for all those. If you're not on our mailing list, let me know. We'll be happy to add you. Um, this is actually my last Senior Circle event. Um, my last day is tomorrow here at Clearview. So um, y'all won't be seeing me next time, but you'll still be seeing all the smiling faces around here. So I appreciate y'all coming and being a part of our, of our senior family here. And I've enjoyed getting to know each of you guys. And 
seeing you each month and um you know i'll just be seeing you around i think so. it's good you talk about fiber then the gallbladder exactly fiber first and then the gallbladder yeah. exactly exactly so we'll get y'all fibered up there you go the well thank y'all so much for coming we appreciate it and you can just leave your trash there and we'll clean it up afterwards